guys, thanks for joining me. I'm getting ready to start on this palette knife painting. It's a boat in a palm. It was inspired by a scene, a photo that I took early morning when the sun just rose down at the Palm Beach Sailing Club on Lake Worth in West Palm Beach, Florida. Let me know what you like or don't like. Definitely drop me a comment, like, share, and subscribe. Thanks guys. Let's go. mixed up. I'm going to change it up a little bit today. I'm going to work on the palette knife while I talk instead of doing a all of it a time lapse. I will do some of it a time lapse just because it takes forever to do this, especially with a palm tree. So I'm coming in here with a very uh, warm blue to express the warm blue sky of Florida. And Florida is known for warm light. I've talked to many painters about it. And Florida definitely has a unique quality to the light. And that will affect the color of the sky. So as I go, I'm going to be changing this mixture and lightening it up to try to express depth in the painting. You'll see what I mean as I go. So I'm just changing my mixture a little bit to lighten it up a little bit, cool it down. That creates depth. So I'll come in here with the lighter mixture and I'll just go right on top of what I've already done. Now I'm making this look easy. <laughs> this takes dexterity, it takes practice, it takes a lot of fundamental knowledge of painting, color, uh, how to express depth and atmospheric perspective it's called. So as I said, I'm definitely making this look fast. But I'm also in production mode because it's Florida show season, so I will paint a little bit faster. So I've lightened up my mixture some more. As I get closer to the horizon line, I'm gonna have it even wash out almost to a white. And that will help me express the intense sun that's rising over there in the east. And then as the further away I get, the cooler the mixture will get. The cooler away, the farther away from the sun, that is. And I'll just come in here with some under layers. And I'll knock down the texture a little because I'll be coming over with some green palm brown paint and that will be on top so it'll have the most texture over there. So again, I'm just lightening up my mixture as I get further toward the horizon line, which will naturally cool it down. Uh, anytime you add white, you're going to cool your mixture down. So, and also gray it down a little bit, which is fine because I could almost add a pure, pure white back there at the horizon line. I'm going in with white. 
it will mix with the other layers that are there, so it won't look exactly white. Now, I usually don't paint this fast, but I've got to get this in the video. So I can speed it up a little bit. In the more technical areas, I will probably have to slow it down. And I'll come back over this again. So it looks like it was uniform. Yeah, there we go. I don't want any of these marks to, these uh, pilot knife marks to look regular though. So that's not what I mean by uniform. I mean uniform as in evenly worked and not rushed. There we go. That's a good base. I'll keep working on this. And I don't think I'm going to do a super hard horizon line. I'm going to leave it loose on this one. Yeah. All right, I'll go work around some other areas now. The palm fronds are quite technical, to be honest. They're time consuming. So I work back and forth between the background and the foreground with the palm fronds. Trying to play with depth. And it's just like every painting I do, I will do a mixture of abstraction and specificity, which is a fun word to say. I have to say that I think palm trees are one of the hardest subjects. They really can stomp some of the best painters. They take a long time and they are so different than any trees that most people grow up with, artists that is, that they haven't had the time to study them the way that I have my entire life as a person who has been in Florida my whole life. So they're not a subject that, honestly, that most painters are that familiar with because they grow up around the deciduous trees of the more four season climates. So I'm just gonna keep bringing in that white at that um, horizon line, which I usually don't go that light, but I like this, the way it's looking, so I'm gonna go for it. Okay, I'm gonna work on this a minute, and I'll be right back. roughed in and I'm going to go right toward to the I won't call this an ocean because well I guess we could let's call it an ocean so I actually did a vertical version of this painting and that is why I'm able to work with such confidence and work in a efficient timely manner here because I already have my concept 
laid out and I already have my idea out there that I did before and it was successful. So I'm just kind of recreating what I've already done, but this time in a horizontal way. So I'm coming in here, I'm gonna work with the horizon. I'm still kind of on the fence. Am I gonna, am I going to create a lost edge on this horizon or am I gonna leave a little underpainting showing? I'm kind of liking the underpainting, so I'm gonna go with that. We'll see. But I know how long this palm is gonna take me, so um, on the parts where I can, I'm going to not fuss and I'm going to get it laid in there. Well, now see, I just, Okay, I won't be doing any underpainting here. So that there goes that idea. Okay, no problem. I'll just go ahead and do a lost edge on this horizon line, which is probably better anyway. But anyway, so as I work on the elements like the ocean and the sky, I'm not going to fuss with it too much because I know what's coming with this these palm fronds and how laborious they are. And I'll hopefully be able to show that in the video. So I just put some sky blue color over on top of the ocean line. And now I'm just working them back and forth so that I don't have a hard line there because then that's not going to lay down for me visually as a horizon line and I've done it many ways and I don't always do it the same way, but this is the more classical way. So I'll go with it. faster so that I can work on the pond fronds while the background is wet, but I'm not going to hold my breath on that. I also wanted to say that um, if you enjoy this video, give me a like. Now the other question I, or the other thing I want to bring up is I have a question for you and that is, do you like a longer video or do you like a faster video? I can do 10 minute videos or 25 minute videos or hour long videos and it would all be helping to dictate how I present my process if I were to do the time lapse or if I were to do the whole thing in real time. Obviously I can't paint a painting in an hour for an hour long video, but I could do a lot of it. You know, some, some paintings, smaller ones I could do some in that, but let me know your thoughts and I would love to hear from you. I um, have my own ideas, but I'd like to get your feedback and what is preferable. Um, obviously, we don't always have a time to, time to watch an hour video. So I was kind of planning on doing a variety. Some I would do quick and kind of uh, fast, and then the others I would slow down and sort of meander through the painting and, um, you know, with no concern for that. So I'd love to hear your thoughts. Drop me a comment about it. Thanks, guys. I'll keep going here. So what I'm doing with these strokes 
is I'm getting a little bit of pain on my knife and then I'm, I'm very loosely holding it and I'm just setting it down and trying to get the um, waves or ripples in the water as horizontal as possible. And then what's the, what that does is it reads as water, uh, water finds its level. So water is extremely horizontal. Now that can be built up with different values, light, medium, and dark over here to create depth in the um, atmosphere or in the, the two dimensional plane and the three dimensional space. So that is what I'm doing. And I don't mean that I didn't even explain that. So I'm going very lightly across the surface. Then I come over to the side and I barely touch the paint that I just laid down and I just knock down this, the texture a little bit so it doesn't look too regular. And I will play light against dark and dark against light and cool against warm and warm against cool until I have a believable field that I think is going to read as the ocean and um, give you that feeling without it being a literal realism. And then the, of course the texture is glorious and it gives it uh, the, the texture that the palette knife creates is very pleasing to the eye and creates interest and the gloss gives a certain intensity to the colors too. They enhance the, it enhances the colors and gives the surface, surface of the painting a finished look without it looking rigid or labored. Have you ever played with the palette knife in your painting? Let me know in the comments below. my ocean looks a little bit choppy and a little bit busy so I'm gonna go in with some flat paint and go in with um, where the underpainting is peeking through too many times and just kind of fill in some of those those gaps so check it out Well, it may seem a little tedious what I'm doing, but that's how painting is when you have something that's not working, it needs to be addressed and uh, not ignored. And um, the solution may be slowing you down. Um, you have to stop what you're doing and address it and it could even be tedious. And that's why painting is uh, not for people that are wanting instant results. That's how I'll say it. So I just have to take the time. I got to slow down and address this issue. I do not like the busyness of this. The last time I did a painting like this, I just came through with big um, palette knives and did general strokes. This time I did little strokes, which is a part of the learning process is to change up how you do things. So I still really like this. It just is gonna require an extra step, which is what I'm doing now. 